Somebody asked if I would do a video on what to do if you work in front of a computer screen all day and beyond, like six hours, eight hours, ten hours a day. God help us. Well, computers are a new problem. As little as 20 years ago, computers weren't a problem because people weren't using them so much, except possibly the developers who were doing the programming. But now it's completely mainstream. Everybody's on computers all the time. What are the problems with computers? Well, there's the, the distance between your eyes and the screen. You're always using the same distance. And that distance is not far enough for your eyes to relax because your eyes only relax when you are looking at the horizon or, you know, some, somewhere really far away. So that's the first thing. The second thing is there's a lack of movement on the computer screen. If you're lucky, you get a few little things moving around. Um, you might be following the cursor as it goes from place to place. But you're not really focusing on seeing the movement. You're focusing on whatever you're thinking about. And so you don't see it. And in any case, it's not a great deal of movement. If you have two screens, you might sort of shift your gaze from one to the other. But again, this is only going to be helpful to your eyes if you notice that you're moving and you let your eyes relax into the movement rather than homing in on whatever it is you want to see next. And another thing that's wrong with looking at computer screens all day is you're centralizing your vision the whole time. You're forgetting about the great big wide world outside, the periphery, what's beyond, what's at the side. And this tends to make your eyes stop moving in the nice, free, easy way that they should move because they're being forced to home in on one small area. Oh, and there's also the lights. The, the light from a computer screen is not natural light and only natural light is really good for your eyes. So what can we do about these things? Apart from switch the computer off and get a different job. Well, no, we, most of us couldn't do that. Um, so the things that are lacking, as I've just described them, are you have a lack of looking into the distance, you have a lack of movement, and you have a lack of peripheral awareness. Those, I would say, are the main ones. And those are things you certainly can do something about when you're working at the computer. And you don't want to be looking at the same distance all day. So get up and go to the window. If you haven't got a window, I feel very sorry for you. But find the furthest thing away that you can look at. And if there isn't anything in the room you're in, then get up and go to another room where there is something. So this is the view from my front room window. I could look at the windows on the houses. I could look at the lines of the telegraph wires going across the sky and the television aerials on top of the houses. They're very fine lines and they're picked out quite nicely against the brightness of the sky. And if I blink and relax and look at them and become interested in how much detail I can see, I'll find that I can make out how many lines there are, how many wires there are, and the angles of them. And that will really stretch out your vision into the distance and give you a break from the close work. Movement. Well, get up and walk about. Do it as often as you can. Make a, a routine for yourself. Just get up, stretch. If you do nothing else, stretch, turn around, sit down again. You will have made a little break from looking at the screen. Here I am, sitting in front of my computer screen, and I can feel my eyes getting tired, so I want to do some swinging. It would be a good idea to practice swinging first so that you get the idea, because it's not just a matter of doing the motions, just kind of moving around on your chair. It's a matter of changing your perception so you can observe the movement going across your face. So you can practice this by, for example, put your hands in front of your face like this. Move your head gently from side to side. You will notice that when you do this, your hands 
move across your field of vision. When I'm here, the hands are on my right. I move across, they're right in front of my nose. Now they're on my left. Once you've got that sense, you might try holding out your thumb at arm's length and swivel your chair while you watch your thumb move. So there's my thumb and as I swivel on my chair the background moves behind my thumb. I'm following my thumb the whole time. It's going in the same direction that I'm going but the background is moving in the opposite direction. And finally you can take your thumb away this is probably the trickiest one and just observe how things are moving through your visual field. They always move in the opposite direction to the direction you're traveling in. If you don't observe that you're probably not connecting with your environment in the right way. Even just getting up from your chair. You see how my background changes? The same thing's happening to my foreground. So this is what I see. I'm getting up I'm sitting down. See how everything moves as I move. Have a mindful coffee break. See how the background moves against your coffee cup as you walk. Do it slowly and carefully so you don't have any chance of spilling it on yourself. So how do you increase your awareness of your periphery? Well, just create movement in the periphery. I have here two rather fetching fly swats. You could use those party sticks with streamers on the end that you get to wave about. Anything you've got, get a pencil and, and sellotape some pieces of paper onto the end. Anything that will flutter and move. And then while you're sitting there, looking at your boring old screen at the same distance all the time and you've forgotten what's around you, just bring in the party things. And if you can't do anything else, give your eyes a break by closing them. We are unique, I should think, among animals in that we spend most of our time focusing on what our eyes are telling us, the information that's coming to us through our visual system. And this, I think, overloads the visual system. You look at a dog or cat, they're listening, as well as seeing and smelling. <laughs> and it's only us humans that are constantly looking, looking, looking. So if you just momentarily close your eyes and focus instead on some other sense, what can I hear? The noises of the office, the noises of the street, people talking, or what can I feel? Is my body hot, cold? Where are the pressure points? So to sum up, vary the distance. Look out of that window, look up at the ceiling, look anywhere you can that's further away than your computer screen. Enlarge your periphery by stimulating the peripheral vision with interesting objects or even just your hands like this. Close your eyes and focus on a different sense and get some movement by swinging. Oops. So, I hope that's helpful. See you next time. Bye.